Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Lay. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please, if you like my videos, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment. This helps me know what content to produce and what not to produce. Gives me some idea what you like. Today, we're gonna to talk about the properties of concrete and how we use that information to get some insights into designing reinforced concrete beams. Thanks, bye. The properties of concrete are pretty complicated. When we go to design a reinforced concrete beam, there's a lot of things that we don't have time or want to spend the time to think about. We don't want to think about, for example, all kinds of different physical properties. We want to make it simple and easy because isn't that great when things in life are simple and easy? And I'm going to explain to you up front about what we do. And then at the end, I'll talk about some of the shortcomings of that. Okay. Because there's no such thing as a free lunch. If I, if I don't pay attention to certain things, it can sometimes cause trouble. In North America, we commonly use cylinder samples to sample our concrete. These cylinders, okay? These cylinders are, if this is the diameter, okay, and it's D, then the height is twice the diameter, okay? One to two ratio. And the cylinders are typically four inches in diameter by eight inches tall. Okay, but some old school specifications and actually sometimes concrete with larger aggregate sizes, you must use a six inch diameter by 12 inch tall because you just can't fit some of the smaller aggregates or some of the larger aggregates inside the four inch diameter cylinder. So after these cylinders are made, they are stored at 73 degrees Fahrenheit and 100% relative humidity. Well, they're not stored at that the first day. They're stored in the field next to the structure for the first day. They're taken to a laboratory, and then they're stored at 73 degrees Fahrenheit and 100% relative humidity, and then they're tested for their strength. They typically do this at 28 days. And you might say to yourself, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why are we doing this? Why am I taking this little bitty piece of concrete that's only next to my structure for one day, and then I put it in this standard environment. And you're like, yeah, I know, it's not perfect. But what it does is it gives a standard way to compare, a standard way to test the material to compare against different structures. And 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 100% relative humidity, is a nice environment to, to promote the hydration of concrete. That's the reaction inside of the concrete. And some contractors will actually try and break their cylinders early than 28 days. Why do they do that? Well, number one, they can start using the structure. They can start saying, aha, I know you want some strength, like 4,000 PSI or 5,000 PSI, and you want it at 28 days, but I'm gonna give it to you earlier. I'm gonna give it to you at seven, so you can let me start using that part of the structure to build a new part. That goes comes down to your schedule, okay? Your schedule, and sometimes you need one part of the structure to build another part. Also, if the contractor gets strength and they turn it in and they prove that to the owner, then they can try to get paid early, okay? And we call F prime C, this F prime C, the design compressive strength of our concrete. And that's typically, typically 28 days. F prime C is, means 28 days, but it doesn't have to be. You could use another day. You could use 60 days, right? You could require something in seven days. Heck, if you wanted to open up a structure really early, or if you had a patch, you might need some kind of strength in like four hours or one day, okay? It really just depends on what you need. What I'm showing here is a stress strain diagram for some typical concrete strengths. So this is the strength on the y-axis, 
This is the strain on the x-axis, okay? And this is how the concrete performs. And these are different strengths. This is a 2,000 PSI or 2 KSI, 4 KSI, and 6 KSI. One thing you should notice is as my strength goes up, the area underneath the stress-strain curve goes down. That means my material is getting more brittle. That happens. It's less ductile. That happens in materials. Uh, typically, as your strength goes up, your ductility goes down, okay? And these different strains show you that, that not all concretes are created equal. That's very true and very important, okay? That as my strength goes up, the amount of strain that I get to here was about 0.003. This one's about 0.004. This one's maybe like 0.0025. Okay. And so that's one thing that you're not always going to get the same amount of strain out of every single kind of concrete. Also, one thing that usually happens though, is your maximum stress is usually pretty close to 0.002. Pretty close to 0.002 strain. But the useful amount of strain, the amount of strain you're, you're gonna get before your concrete like explodes, right? Is somewhere between 0.003 and 0.004. And we'll find out in, for these videos and in the concrete world, that a strain of 0.003 is pretty common to use for the maximum amount of strain that I can count on getting in my concrete member. So I have a statement at the top of this page that, that may be a little controversial. It's not to me, okay? And it's not to a lot of other concrete experts that I know out there, but some people might find this a little controversial. That's okay, we can talk about it. The concrete world right now is obsessed with strength. And I'm gonna say it's a huge mistake. And I think people in general, people in general, especially engineers, we think stronger is better, always, no matter what, in every circumstance. And I'd say I'd, I don't agree with that. You need to be strong enough, okay? But does extra strength help you? Think of it like this. Think, 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 think of all the people you know. Think of the strongest person you know like physically strongest person you know. Do you always want that person, no matter what, to be on your team for anything? Is that person the best artist you know? Are they the best public speaker? Are they the most creative? Are they the most flexible? No, they're just the strongest. Do we always want the strongest person on our team? I don't think so. We want the person that has the best skill set, the best tools to help us right at that time. So do we always want the strongest concrete? I don't think so. We want the concrete that's best for the application that we need. Sometimes we need that concrete to last a long time. Sometimes we need that concrete to be very flowable. Sometimes we needed to do all kinds of different stuff. We needed to be light. We needed to insulate. Okay. They even make concrete that you can actually shine light through. There's all kinds of different concretes out there. Sometimes you just want it to be beautiful. Is beautiful always the strongest? I want concrete that's going to last. I want concrete that's going to do what I need it to do for as long as possible, and that is not always the strongest. Maybe I should talk more about that in a future video. But after that tirade, we're going to talk about some of the properties, some of the engineering properties. And these are a little bit of a misnomer, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. If I want to know the tensile strength of my concrete, a good estimate is to take 7.5 times the square root of F prime C, then remember that's in PSI, okay? That's a good estimate. Or another one is about 10% of the compressive strength. The, the tensile strength of concrete is about 10% of the compressive strength. 
The modulus of rupture, that's the flexural strength of concrete. That if, it's if I take a beam and I, I go to break it, okay? If I go to use the sigma equals my over i and I'm just using concrete, okay? Then one way to calculate that is it's somewhere between 10 and 11 times the square root of f prime c. So it's between, between 10 and 11 as my coefficient times the square root of f prime c. The shear strength of concrete is about two times the square root of f prime c. The modulus of concrete, here is the equation that is typically used. This is w, that's the unit weight. That's like the density of concrete to the 1.5 power times 33 times the square root of f prime c. Ugh, yuck. Usually, we just assume the unit weight's 145 pounds per cubic foot. And that simplified, that makes this equation simplify to 57,000 times the square root of f prime c. Now, one thing that I hope you realize is that this, these, none of these equations are right. They're just not right. They're good estimates based on measuring the compressive strength. But this idea that just because I know how something is going to fail in compression, that that same exact relationship is going to tell me how it's going to fail in tension, that's not right. It's just not right. Concrete's not that simple. Concrete are like people. They're, it's complicated. It's varied. And that's what's so beautiful about it. It's amazing. Watch some of my other video, videos about, about concrete because I'm kind of obsessed with it. But all of our properties of our concrete are very aggregate dependent, okay? And these are just estimates, estimates to make it easier to calculate these things quickly. Because in the end, that's what we want to be able to do. We want to get quick answers to help design our members that are conservative. Thanks so much. Take care.